Dear colleagues, uh, I'm happy to present a view of the currently available data on safety and efficacy of pulvertide, the novel entry inhibitor for treatment of chronic HDV infection. So here are my disclosures. And I'd like to start with background info on chronic hepatitis delta. It is caused by the HDV, which is a small defective RNA virus that requires the presence of HBS antigen for its replication and transmission. And therefore, it only occurs in individuals also infected with HBV. HDV infection is known to be the most severe form of viral hepatitis. It affects approximately 12 million people globally uh, with considerable variability. HDV infection shows a more progressive and severe course of disease than HPV mono infection, with significantly increased rates of cirrhosis development, liver decompensation, HCC, and uh, liver related mortality. The current therapeutic options are very limited, and currently there is no treatment approved in the US. Peg interferon alpha is used as the de facto off label standard of uh, care, which is estimated to provide benefit for approximately only 10% of patients due to its poor tolerability, high discontinuation rate, and about a half of responders relapsing post treatment. The combined viral and biochemical response, which is defined as undetectable HDV RNA or at least total of 10 decline baseline with ALT normalization is considered as an acceptable chronic on therapy surrogate endpoint. Uh, Bulovatide, which is formerly known as Merculex B, is a novel synthesized lipopeptide. Uh, it specifically blocks viral entry by binding to NTCP receptor and acts as a highly selected entry inhibitor of HDV into hepatocytes. It is derived from the conservative NTCP binding region of pre S1 domain of HPV large envelope protein. BLV showed favorable safety and tolerability, especially when compared to PEG interferon. It is administered as daily subcutaneous injections. BLV 2 mg is conditionally approved in Europe based on phase 2 data for treatment of chronic HDV in adults with compensated liver disease with or without cirrhosis. At this slide, you can see the overview of four pivotal studies of pulver type. All of these studies enrolled both cirrhotic and non cirrhotic patients with chronic HDV infection. The studies MIR-2-2 and MIR-2-3 are completed now, and its data served as the basis for conditional marketing authorization in the EU. The MIR-2-2 study assessed three dosages of BLV on top, on top of TDF, the backbone HPV therapy, against TDF alone. It included 30 patients per arm treated for 24 weeks, and the primary endpoint was viral response at the end of treatment. The MIRTO3 study assessed BLV in combination with PEG interferon for 48 weeks, as well as monotherapy with BLV. And the primary endpoint was undetectable HDB RNA at the end of 24 week follow up. To date, it's the only available data on 48 week, uh, weeks of treatment, uh, though in limited population on, in patients per arm. And the currently ongoing studies MIR-204 and 301 investigate longer treatment duration with larger populations. And these studies um, are currently ongoing and its interim 24-week data is available and we're going to show it um, to you today. The MIR-301 study investigates monotherapy with BLV, uh, though nukes can be administered if indicated per treatment guidelines. And the MIRTO4 study exposed combined regimens with PEG interferon. So, the MIR31 study investigates 2 and 10 milligram BLV monotherapy for 144 weeks compared to the delayed treatment arm with no HDV treatment for the first eight weeks, followed by BLV 10 milligram. This study enrolled 150 patients in four countries, and the key criteria are patients with chronic HDV infection. Uh, elevated ALT and compensated liver disease with or without cirrhosis. The primary endpoint is the combined response at week uh, 48. And today I present the results of the interim analysis at week 24. So at the week 24, the combined response uh, was achieved by 37 and 28% of subjects in 2 and 10 milligrams milligram of uh, BLV, respectively, compared to no subjects uh, achieving the combined response in the delayed treatment arm. The HDV RNA progressively declined in both BLV arms through the uh, 24-week therapy period, 
and 55 and 68 percent of subjects in the two and 10 milligram arms achieved the viral response, which is undetectable HTV RNA or at least two log 10 decline. Uh, it was significantly higher than the control. Next slide is biochemical response and ALT normalization was achieved by more than a half of subjects in the BLV two milligram arm. Both arms demonstrated significantly higher rates compared to control. Overall, this uh, MIR 31 study data on efficacy clearly shows that the treatment with pulvertide is associated with significant HDV RNA declines and ALT normalization, and it further supports the conditional EMA approval of BLV to milligram dosage. The next slide shows the safety data in MIR 31 study. Overall, there were few adverse events and very few grade 3 4 adverse events. There were no serious adverse events or events leading to drug discontinuation in the BLV arms and no deaths in the study. The total bile salts were expectedly elevated in BLV arms, but all elevations were asymptomatic. The next slide shows an overview of safety data on BLV in these four studies. Overall, BLV is safe and well-tolerated therapy, and the most common adverse events are headaches and increase in serum total bile salts. This elevation of total bile salts under BLV treatment is expected based on its small affection, which is inhibition of anti-CP receptor, which is responsible for uptake of bile salts into hepatocytes. Therefore, the elevations are dose-dependent and uh, thus less pronounced in the 2 mg arm compared to higher dosages. Importantly, elevations in total bile salts were asymptomatic and fully reversible after treatment cessation in completed studies MIR-2 and MIR-2-3. In the program, there were no on-treatment serious adverse events related to BLV. However, there were post-treatment essays that indicated exacerbation of hepatitis after drug discontinuation, which is generally not unexpected and it's known for uh, discontinuation of antiviral treatment in general. And injection site reactions were rare and mainly mild in severity. Having said that, I'd like to briefly touch the other treatment regimens that have been investigated, including potentially curative regimens. First of all, the combination with PEC. And by the way, in the study MIR-2-3, which is um, not shown here, after um, uh, 48 weeks of combination therapy of BLV 2 milligram and PEC, four patients out of 15 experienced, experienced HBS antigen loss, and three of them had anti-HBS antigen antibodies 24 weeks post-treatment. And the MIR-204 study presented here further investigates the combo regimen. The BLV 2 mg and 10 mg combined with PEC for 48 weeks, followed by 48 weeks of BLV monotherapy. And these arms are compared to PEC monotherapy and BLV 10 mg monotherapy. The primary endpoint in this study is the off-treatment viral response, which is undetectable HDV RNA 24 weeks after the end of treatment. So at the week 24, the uh, viral response of undetectable HDV RNA or at least 2 log 10 decline from baseline was achieved by 88 and 92% of subjects in the combination arms compared to 72% in BLV 10 mon monotherapy arm and 38% in PEC one arms. In conclusion, I'd like to say that based on the available data, therapy with BLV was overall safe and well tolerated. The monotherapy with BLV demonstrated pronounced virologic and biochemical response after 24 weeks of treatment. And longer monotherapy with BLV, as well as combination with PEC, have been explored as potentially curative regimens. The biologic license application to FDA is planned in the end of this year. Thank you, and I'll be glad to answer any of your questions.